When designing Jim and Helen's main living space, we came across a few very common challenges. But first, can we just acknowledge how cute Jim and Helen are? This is where our famous chicken, you know, from the farm that uh, she had stuff. Now, it's not what I would use as a decoration. I introduced uh, my favorite mother. She uh, also is my roommate. He's not a great talker in the morning. That's where I shine. And it's just been nice. It was an honor to blend their styles together. As you know from the episode, Jim loves modern Park City rustic design and Helen has a more cottage grandma chic aesthetic. Because it is a small home, a small footprint, Jim really wanted to be able to open it up, which I totally understand. So we knocked out the wall to the kitchen and created one large opening. If you're renovating your home and you run into the issue of having a structural beam, and to be very transparent, I do not like it when people renovate their homes and leave the steel beams exposed because I feel like it never quite looks as cool as they think it's going to look. So I choose to wrap them in either drywall or we'll wrap them in a wood material and stain it so it looks nice and finished. During this remodel, we lost an entire wall of storage in the kitchen. And like I said, when designing Teresa's kitchen, it's all about priorities. Jim and Helen, not big cooks. They said they just need to reheat their takeout. At the end of the day, it was just most important for them to have an open feeling space. One thing I really like to pay attention to when designing any space is repeating elements. So if we have a dark stain on a beam, we need to have it somewhere else. That helps things feel continuous. You could tie those finishes into the furniture in some way, just so that it doesn't feel random. So yes, we like to repeat elements, but we also wanna break it up so it doesn't feel boring. So incorporating lighter elements, wood tones, or even the color on the walls, I think just helps balance out some of the darker, more rustic elements. The stain choices in their home and some of the hard finishes relate back to Jim's aesthetic. And then I felt the fireplace, the stone finishes on the fireplace, was the perfect way to blend both of their styles. We get that stone fireplace that has an overgrout look that kind of speaks to a cottage aesthetic, but the stone speaks to that mountain modern aesthetic. The furniture layout in the living room was under a lot of consideration because we needed to fit not one, but two recliners for Jim and Helen. When I first walked into the home, it was very cramped. I was kind of shuffling to the side to get through everything. And we just needed to anchor the room with a few large pieces. And we did that by a generous sofa under the windows, the two recliners, a round coffee table because we needed to create some flow. If I was in a larger living room, I may have added something that was separating the kitchen and the dining room with the living room, but I decided against that because we wanted to create that open feeling between the kitchen and the living room because that was so important to Jim and Helen. One of my favorite parts about this project was the opportunity to create beautiful vignettes with treasures that they had collected over the years. We just wanted to spread them throughout the room and then create little groupings so that we had this modern and traditional mix. And then we do that in a couple of other places so that it feels very intentional. What I love about this episode is that it is a testament to mixing two styles together. And you can do it. Even if it's Grandma Chic meets Modern Mountain, you can do it. It just is about finding a few unifying elements and then being thoughtful in how you pair items together.